An atom is the smallest unit of an element that can exist on its own. And atoms are made up of three what we call subatomic particles. They are subatomic because they are smaller than the atom. The subatomic particles that they are made up of are called protons, which are positively charged, neutrons, which are neutral, and electrons, which are negatively charged. We use something called a Bohr diagram to help us understand the atomic structure better. It's important to note here that a Bohr diagram is not a drawing of what an atom looks like. It is only a model, something that we use to understand the structure of the atom better. And so there are two important regions when looking at an atom. The first in our Bohr diagram here of a phosphorus atom is the nucleus. Now the nucleus is the dense region that contains the protons and neutrons at the center of the atom. So when we draw a Bohr diagram, we always show that the protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. And for phosphorus, we know that there are 15 protons in the nucleus and 16 neutrons that we would find in the nucleus. This is referred to as a dense region because the protons and neutrons are the heaviest subatomic particles and they are very close together in the nucleus and therefore it is the most dense region in the atom. The second important region in a Bohr diagram or in an atom is the energy level. Now an energy level is a region around the nucleus in which electrons are arranged. Important to note here that they are arranged in order of increasing energy, which tells us that the first energy level, the one closest to the nucleus, contains the electrons that have the least energy. The second energy level then has a slightly higher energy and the third energy level, and there are up to eight possible energy levels that we can find, each with more energy than the previous. What we then find inside each energy level are things called orbitals, which are regions within an energy level in which the chance of finding an electron is greatest. Important to note here that we refer to the chance of finding an electron, that is because the electrons are constantly moving and they're moving at very high speeds. So we can never with certainty say exactly where that electron is, so we talk generally about the probability of finding an electron in a specific area. What we can see from this Bohr diagram is that the first energy level contains only two electrons or one orbital. We say that it has one orbital where each orbital contains two electrons. So here we can see our first energy level is a circle that is drawn with one box that has space for two electrons. Now we know that a phosphorus atom has 15 electrons and so the first two electrons will always go into the first orbital in the first energy level. We can see from this drawing here that the second energy level contains four orbitals. Those four orbitals are spaces within, within which the electrons can move. Four orbitals containing two electrons each, which means that the second energy level can hold a maximum of eight electrons. Now, a phosphorus atom requires or has 15 electrons, which means that we then place the next eight electrons. Note here that one electron is placed in each orbital before the orbitals are then filled with a second electron, much like seats on a bus, where each person will sit on their own seat before somebody is forced to share. The third energy level is exactly the same as the second energy level, where there are four orbitals, which means a maximum of eight electrons. Although we can see here that this atom of phosphorus that we have already has 10 electrons drawn in, and since we need only 15 electrons, we only must add five more. And once again, we add one electron to each orbital before we start filling the orbitals. And here we have now drawn a complete Bohr diagram for a phosphorus atom, where we have shown the nucleus that contains our protons and neutrons, we have shown our first energy level that has one orbital, which contains two electrons, 
our second energy level that contains four orbitals with a total of eight electrons, third energy level also containing four orbitals and eight electrons. It is possible for us to draw a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth energy level in and what we will find in those energy levels is that the number of orbitals and therefore the number of electrons increases but in most scenarios we only use up to the first 18 or first 20 elements and therefore only require three or sometimes four energy levels when drawing a Bohr diagram at school level.